Okay. Um, are we focused? Are we focused? Mm -hmm. All right. Here we go. Uh, good morning. I'm Mason Andrew. Um, I want to start off by telling uh, a little bit about the Trayvon Martin uh, story. Uh, Trayvon Martin was 17 years old, uh, and he was walking through a gated community. Uh, and uh, George Zimmerman uh, saw him, and he thought he looked suspicious or he was up to no good. And um, you know, a little later on, there was an altercation, and Trayvon Martin was uh, fatally shot. Um, and there was a trial, and George Zimmerman uh, got off by saying it was self-defense. Uh, so today, I'm here to talk about the eradication of racial profiling in our society. Um, I've done the research, but I also think that we live in a time in a world that we should we shouldn't have to deal with racial profiling. Like we've we've been through that, you know, it's over. We should you know move on. Uh, so racial profiling affects minorities everywhere, um, but I think with our generation, uh, we can have uh, we can stop uh, this injustice. So today, I want to talk about the problem, a plan for change. And finally, uh, solutions and what you can do. So first off, let's, start about, let's talk about the problem. Racial profiling is an endemic that is spreading through our society. <clears throat> and minorities have to deal with racial profiling every day. According to uh, uh, civilrights.org, the realities of racial profiling, there are two kinds. There is uh, the street level and there's the counterterrorism level. Uh, the street level, which is traffic stops, um, and here's some statistics. Um, African American drivers are twice as likely as white drivers to be arrested during a traffic stop, while Hispanic drivers are more likely than white uh, and African American drivers to receive a ticket. And then the counterterrorism level would be airport security, um, like Islamic uh, followers uh, get pulled over and they have to do extra screenings. Uh, racial profiling also affects the criminal justice system in a negative way. One, it destroys the underlying trust that law enforcement should have on our society. And those burdened uh, by racial profiling, they have to prove their innocence. Um, and that was according to civilrights.org, uh, the case against racial profiling. So racial profiling is a big problem. And with your help, I think we can significantly decrease or eliminate uh, this from our society. So plan, it won't be easy and it won't be simple. Uh, the first portion is to, is to inform the general public. Um, but this won't be easy because there are some who, fit, who, don't, who would approve of racial profiling in our society. Another is uh, contact the federal government and see what, what uh, fail safes do they have in place uh, to prevent uh, racial profiling. Uh, so get the word out, uh, write your congressman. Um, there was an act called racial, End Racial Profiling. Um, and that was from, that was the 111th Congress came up with that. But they uh, did not want to enact it. So, the 112th Congress um, has the option to take action, so and I think we should urge them to take action. Um, also, Obama wanted to end racial profiling during uh, his uh, campaign, um, but I haven't seen that. So if we write him and write our Congress, I think we could probably change that. Uh, another thing for change is having forms that officers fill out during a traffic stop that involve uh, the race, the gender, uh, religious background, nationality. Um, this will keep the officers more uh, accountable for how um, they conduct their traffic stops and who they pull over for what reason. Um, so with this plan in motion, we can see some benefits, such as uh, this plan will start to solve the main issue of racial profiling. Um, officers will be held more accountable. Uh, citizens will uh, change their mindset from, uh, you know, equality for all. Um, and then 
The goal is that there will be no more racial profiling in our society so we can live without prejudice. Um, and then I want to show you some statistics. Um, so here, <clears throat> in 2002, uh, there was about 8.8% of uh, white people who were stopped, and 9.2 were African American, and so they. It seems pretty level in 2002. Um, 2005, uh, the majority is, or the white and Hispanics, they are they're equal in their poll in their uh, in their stop rates. But if you look over at the searches. Um, the white, uh, the white drivers, they don't get searched near as much as the African or this or the Hispanics, which, you know, it's all due to probable cause, which is uh, this one. So, if we look at the top left one, you have um, American, you have Native Americans, and. 93% of that is just searches, and only 14% uh, was contraband. Like you found, you find they found contraband with them. Um, the relative uh, difference between the observed and the expected value for African Americans, um, the stop percentage is 213%. And the searches is 145 at 455 percent, and I mean that seems a little outrageous that it's that high in our society today. Um, the next one, the probable cause um, is what everyone is what most is basically kind of racial profiling, um, and so yeah. So, um, in conclusion, uh, today we looked at the problem that there is racial profiling in our society. Um, we looked at a plan for at, for change. Uh, we got we got to look at some change in, the change in our society without racial profiling. So, I urge you to take action to write your congressman, um, talk to local officials, start petitions, um, and with your help, we can eradicate uh, racial profiling from our society. Thank you.